Hi, good evening. Um, if Scotland does go independent, who's going to defend it? Are you going to create Scotland. your own army, navy and air force, or what? Yes. Sorry, you uh, are you going to me to expand upon that? I, yes. I would like you to expand on that, because <laughs> I, David, I haven't yeah. heard that before. Uh, no, the, 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 my colleague, uh, uh, Stuart MacDonald, uh, he used to be our defence spokesperson in Westminster, put a lot of work into this. My uh, colleague, uh, Dave Duggan, who's taken on the defence portfolio, uh, is incredibly uh, motivated to ensure that we have a, a clear uh, strategy in terms of defence. Um, the big thing, of course, is that we would seek um, immediately to become a member, member state of NATO, uh, which I think is incredibly important, not just for Scotland, but for our allies uh, on these islands and right across uh, Europe as well, as we all seek to work together to, to combat the threats that there are. Uh, Scotland will be a, a keen uh, and proactive advocate uh, for uh, cooperative security, and we'll do that through the, the prism of NATO working alongside our allies. I think that can only be a, a good thing uh, and um, I'm looking forward to, to that coming to, to pass. You haven't mentioned the word nuclear. No, I've not. Because, I mean, that, that is a big issue, isn't That's it? It's not a big issue at all. Um, well, you have nuclear bases in Scotland. In, indeed, indeed. Um, and those bases would need to be sited elsewhere in the UK should they wish to keep their nuclear deterrent. But you want to be a member of NATO and use the nuclear umbrella but not pay for any of it? Well, there's, there's a number of uh, nations within NATO who don't have nuclear weapons, of course. Um, I think uh, everyone is, is well aware of that. Uh, my position and my Do you not think Ukraine rather regrets getting rid of its nuclear weapons? I'm not going to get necessarily into that debate. No, because it's an inconvenient argument. No, no, cause, no, because I don't think I don't think it's it's necessarily fair because nobody uh, seen a madman like Putin doing what he did and the horror that he's uh, put upon the Ukrainian people is is unforgivable. Um, in relation to our position, um, the world is not made safer by having nuclear weapons. In fact, the reason that everyone is so fearful of Vladimir Putin. Uh, in relation to this conflict is because we do have a madman who has his finger on the nuclear button and the damage that he could cause would be uh, extensive. That's not an argument for nuclear weapons, that's an argument for him not having nuclear weapons and I want to see a world uh, where we and get Would you point. commit to spending 2% of GDP on defence? I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's... I've got many powers but I don't think I can uh, necessarily commit to that. I would like to see us uh, do that um, if possible. Um, I think that would be that would send a clear signal that we're going to take this uh, particular issue seriously. Um, and I can only assure the the listener the listeners uh, that that we want to be a serious player when it comes to defence, working strategically with our our allies. And I know my colleagues who are working on this specific brief um, have been at the forefront of that. David, do you want to come back? So yes, I think he's being totally disingenuous. To be a member of NATO, you requires to having having forces. Where is, what is the population of Scotland? Where are these forces coming from? Scotland has forces within it at this moment in time. Where did they come from? Part of the British Army. They're part of yes, the British UK forces. Scotland's yes, independent. You'll lose them. Where, where are those Scottish soldiers going You're to go? You're not part of Britain anymore if you become independent, surely? Yes, but we will still need forces to defend us. And you have to against who? Forces. Against who? <laughs> in the exact same way that everyone needs forces in order to prepare yourself for, for any event that, that could arise. Scotland, and this is this is an important point, Scotland's sea border in particular is enormous. So we're going to obviously have to be in a position where we're now, uh, able to, to defend that and to defend that well and hopefully working with our allies in, in NATO we can do that. So you, there's no question that you would still pull defence with the rest of the these islands, I should well, say. Well, I think that would obviously be a dis discussion for, for post-independence, but I would like to see as close cooperation okay. as possible. I think that would be in everyone's benefit. Yeah. David, thank you. 